Good morning guys, it's a little chilly here in the shop this morning. I just wanted to come to you with a, a short knife review. This is the Benchmade 940 or 9400 Osborne in S30V steel. Uh, my wife got me this a couple couple weeks ago and I was, I was unsure about it. Uh, but I tell you what, I have absolutely fallen in love with this knife. It's wonderful. So what I'd like to do this morning is talk to you a little bit about it, give you some of my observations in real world use, um, talk to you about the pros and the cons. Uh, there, there are some cons of this, believe it or not, but overall, it's an excellent knife. So let's dive into it and talk about the Benchmade 940 or 9400 Osborne in S30V steel. So this knife, has obviously anodized green scales. It's got a purple liner. Um, this one is the automatic with the black finish on the blade. Uh, as you can see, she, uh, she had it engraved from Benchmade. Uh, she was worried that I wouldn't like that, but honestly, I, I absolutely love it. I would, it keeps somebody from walking off with my pocket knife. It just happens to have my name all over it. So let's talk about some of the things I love about it. You know, there's there's nobody likes starting off with things that you don't like, right? So let's let's start off with with everything I love about this knife. I love the blade style and profile. I love the the length of blade. It's got a it's got about a three and a half or so inch blade on it. I, I absolutely love that. I love the the reverse tanto style. Um, I absolutely love the fact that it's S30V steel. Uh, the deep carry is is wonderful. One of the one of the best things about this knife is that it is an automatic. Um, it is push button automatic. It's, it's not just an assist opening. That's phenomenal. Ab absolutely phenomenal. I'll be honest with you. Uh, it's the first automatic pocket knife I've ever had, um, but. It, it absolutely, it's not just a toy. Um, it is something that I am very thankful that I got. I'm not sure how I made it without it before because it it's really changed the game. It, it lets you open your knife without hindering what you're doing with your other hand. And it, it lets you get into it quickly. Um, like I said in my intro video, I've been in public safety for forever. This knife would have been a game changer back, back in my younger days, especially. Uh, but I mean, I, I still love the fact that it's automatic now. I, I was cutting some Coban the other day and had one hand tied up. I needed to cut some Coban, couldn't couldn't find a pair of scissors, so reached in my pocket, pulled pulled out my 940, opened her up, cut that Coban, and was able to continue what I was doing without uh, without letting letting go of of what I was working on. Uh, so it, it absolutely functions very, very well. As you can tell by looking at the knife, I mean, you know, it's, it's only a couple months old and you can see it's, it's got some wear and tear on it. Uh, I'm hard on my stuff guys. And this goes for this review and every other review in the future. I'm not going to do a review for you of something that that I haven't used. And I'm rough on stuff. Uh, a whole lot harder on things than the average individual because when I buy something, I, I try to buy the best quality that I can afford um, and I expect it to perform. Uh, I borderline abuse things. I mean, I, it's it will be evident when I start reviewing stuff for you, you'll see that, that my tools, whether it be this pocket knife, uh, a hammer, a firearm, whatever, my tools get used. They're, I don't have safe queens. I don't have things that just sit in my toolbox 
if I'm going to spend my hard-earned money on it, I'm going to use it and I expect it to perform. And if it does not perform like I expect, you'll be the first ones to know about it. I will be honest with you in, in my reviews. I will tell you exactly how I feel about it. Uh, I don't, I don't care what the manufacturer thinks. I don't, I don't work for them. Um, I'm doing this to share the information uh, with as many people as possible. Because I, I wish someone would have done a review on this knife like this when uh, when I was looking to buy it. Because honestly, I probably wouldn't have been skeptical. Uh, so let's talk about this, the blade steel for a second. The S30V steel is wonderful. I came out of a Spyderco Mantix. Uh, two, it had similar steel in it, and I loved it. It it held an edge very well. It was kind of difficult to sharpen. It's very very hard steel, uh, but I have the tools and equipment needed to uh, to sharpen that, so it wasn't an issue for me. So the S30V steel for me has has been absolutely wonderful. Um, I I grew up with old Chinese made steel. I mean, I'll be honest. Uh, most pocket knives like this growing up. 440 stainless or something like that was was the cats me out or at least that's all I knew about until I got into the higher end steels as an adult uh, I, I still don't get me wrong though I still carry an old case pocket knife with some a three bladed stockman with some chrome vadium steel in it uh, it's probably still one of my favorite knives but anyhow the S30V steel is is wonderful it's tough it doesn't chip. It, it's very hard. It holds an edge. It's excellent at edge retention. And it's still easy enough to sharpen for the average person. Uh, you can sharpen it on a stone um, or a diamond or something along those lines. Uh, you can strop it on leather. Uh, it's not so hard that you can't maintain the edge throughout. I use a green green buffing compound and it will return an edge just like that on it. Uh, so the steel, I love it. Blade length, love it. It's great. Uh, feels good in your hand. The reverse Tonto is, is a very good utilitarian style of blade. It gives you that fine point that you can kind of choke up on with your finger and, and work on small tasks or you know, it's a fairly good size blade. I mean, if you look at my hand, it, it, it's the width of my hand. Um, so it, it's a fairly good size blade. And overall, it's, it's slim in its design, so it carries well in your pocket. It feels good in your hand. You can get a good, good, good purchase on it and get that thumb up there where you can really control that blade and, and, and make it work for you. Um, it does have a lock on the back that locks it. Uh, does not allow you to act or push the, the button and close it. Or if it is closed, the, the little lock there slides forward like this. And when you push the button, it, it doesn't work. It kind of, uh, well, I'll just show you. It goes right there in the back. And you may be able to see there. And locks the push button out completely. Uh, it does actuate very easily. You can just kind of use the tip of your finger there and make it work. Let's talk about the automatic feature in this in the 9400. The 940 Osborne does, is not automatic. The 9400 is. Uh, the same knife, the only difference is one's automatic and one is not. But let's talk about the automatic feature in this one. So some of the automatics I've picked up in the past felt kind of janky, you know, or they weren't smooth. There was so much spring tension in them that when you opened them, the mass of the blade coming to that sudden stop wanted to just jerk the knife out of your hands like this. I never liked that feeling. This knife has been a, is a game changer. You know, it, um, it feels very good even when it's opening. They have married speed and mass perfectly together. So the, the knife, just with a light light grip, the knife does not want to fly out of your hand. Uh, you can see just, just a couple fingers there and it just barely wiggles. 
Um, it, does, it doesn't want to fly out of your hand, but yet it opens quickly. It's not a slug. Um, so they, they got that feature absolutely spot on. Uh, so, like I said, it's got a deep carry pocket clip that is reversible. You can flip it to the other side if you want. I, I haven't found a reason to do that. And I, I carry this knife on my left side, tip down. Or, excuse me, tip up. Um, pocket clip is of excellent quality. I've, I've gotten it hung on things, and it's yet to stretch, bend, or break. Uh, it, has, it, it was extremely tight trying to get it to to hook onto my pocket in the in the very beginning but now it is kind of loosened up just a touch but not not to where i would call it bent or loose it's still very very snug um maintain its original shape it still lays flush against the frame as you can see uh, there's no light under where the clip actually interacts with the frame uh, very good Benchmade, spot on on the design of this knife. Now let's talk about some things that I don't really care for and I would have thought would have been a little bit better in a north of $200 pocket knife. Well, let's talk about the finish on the blade. So this black finish on the blade, coming from Spyderco, uh, in that Mantix, they have a DLC coating on that knife and it was probably by far the toughest finish I have ever seen in my entire life. I had that knife for the last 10 years and I absolutely beat it to death. And the coating was still in fairly good shape. This knife has been honed a few times, sharpened a few times and carried just a little, you know, a little bit over two months. Uh, and it's got quite a bit of wear on it. I'll be honest, I'm not impressed with the uh, the black coating. If I had it to do over again, I would have went with the satin finish steel just because of aesthetics. Um, you can see, let's see if I can get it up here for you. You can see it's got some white paint on it, so I actually do use this knife. And you may be able to tell, may not. Like I said, I'm not a professional videographer but it's got scratches all over it. it um, it's just been beat to pieces as far as the, the finish goes. And I'm not impressed. I, in, my gunsmith, in the gunsmithing world, I apply finishes to stuff all the time. And I use KG Gun Coat in the gunsmithing world. I've used Cerakote, I've started on Cerakote. I believe this is a Cerakote finish. And I'm not impressed. I wasn't impressed with Cerakote then. I'm not. I'm not impressed with them now. Uh, let's talk about the anodizing for a second. The anodizing is very smooth, very soft in the hands. It feels good. Uh, it it does feel a little slick, but it's not as slick as you would think. Uh, one of the things that I don't care for with the anodizing is it's soft. All right, so again, from the gunsmithing world, I've dealt with a lot of different manufacturers anodizing. And some of them are, you about need a jackhammer to get them off. I mean, you know, you put them in the blasting cabinet and blast them with aluminum oxide and, and you struggle to, to get them off. Now, this particular anodizing, I'm not that impressed with. Uh, you may be able to see, you can see this little spot right about there. It started to wear. It, it's not. Uh, it's not, not as durable as I thought. So, Benchmade, if you happen to see this, I doubt you will. Uh, send it. Send it to a better anodizer. I mean, you were talking a north of two hundred dollar pocket knife here. Send it to a better anodizer. I've got Anderson lowers that are $39 and the anodizing is better than what's on this knife. Uh, so get a hard coat anodizing instead of, instead of this stuff. Uh, but honestly, that's about the only things about it I don't like. It's just finished stuff. Uh, this, this knife 
is definitely a keeper. And I'll probably order another one to uh, sit in the safe until I wear this one out just in case they stop making it. That's how much I like this knife. But like I said, guys, I, um, I'm looking forward to doing some more reviews for you. I've enjoyed doing this review. I, I do love this pocket knife. Again, it's the Benchmade 940 or 9400. This is actually the 9400. It's, it's the automatic. Um, I love it. I would buy it again. I look forward to continuing to use it. And if something changes, I'll let you know. But as of right now, I, I'm looking to buy another one of these. My favorite knife I've ever owned, uh, hands down. So... Like I said, I've enjoyed doing this. I look forward to doing more reviews with you and for you. Um, I'm going to, I'll give you a little sneak peek here. I'm gonna review this for you. This is probably one of the best handguns I've ever shot. This is the SIG 320 uh, XRP. It is a beast of a handgun. It's got the Romeo 1 Pro. So look forward to this review, you know, uh, uh, keep checking back. I'll get this review done and posted for you. If I can put the holster on the right way, we would be in good shape. I'm used to it being on my hind end and not my hand, but um, nah, I don't care about this holster so much, but we'll get into that too. But we're going to review this, this beast of a gun next. Uh, like I said, it's the SIG 320 with a Romeo 1 Pro on top of it. Uh, I've got a whole lot of other stuff I'd like to, to, to review and talk about. Some of it, some of it's gonna be great. Some of it's not gonna be so great. I'm gonna tell you to stay the hell away from it. Um, like I said, I'm not beholden to anybody. No, Nobody pays for any of this other than, than me. Uh, so we're, you're gonna get good, honest reviews right here, folks. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to get off of here and get some work done. I've got some chairs to build, which I may bring y'all along with on parts of that. That's, uh, that's what this chair right here is going to turn into is, is some chairs. I've already built a kitchen table using this wood and, and I'm fixing to build some chairs. Um, keep your heads on the swivel folks. Watch your neighbors, watch your, watch out for your family. Um, our country is a pretty bad place. Keep spreading that conservative message everywhere you go to everybody you talk to. We got to increase our numbers at the ballot box. That's the only way that we're ever going to be able to fix this issue in our country without uh, without refreshing that tree of liberty. Is is continuing to vote our peace and spreading our message. Uh, it's time for conservatives to stop sitting by and start speaking up. So, so spread, spread the message. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your family, tell everybody you run into. Spread that message. Uh, let folks know that we're headed for a communist country. That's the main driving point behind this channel is spreading that conservative message. So, so keep, keep on keeping on. I uh, look forward to seeing you guys here in the very near future. Thanks, and y'all have a great day.